and as I looked out into the crowd, I really don't see that many former teachers of mine. I see a lot of people that I went to school with. Uh, I see a lot of friends that I have. Uh, I don't know if that's a sign uh, that I'm getting older or that the teachers are getting younger. I'm going to go with the theme that the teachers are getting younger and uh, we're not getting any older. Uh, but you know, uh, this is a great opportunity to be here um, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, je pense que la plupart d'entre vous le savez, uh, j'ai fait mes études en immersion française. La demande pour ce programme était beaucoup moins grande à ce moment-là. Uh, you know, education uh, is extremely important and for me uh, it means a lot in terms of improving the lives of future generations of our province. And I was very fortunate uh, to grow up in a family uh, that valued uh, education. Uh, both uh, uh, my parents uh, instilled in me at a young age uh, to get a good education. I had a very lucky that I came uh, from a home that valued education so much, but education uh, is also uh, learned in the classroom. And I learned a lot of lessons in my years at West Kent, Queen Charlotte, uh, and Colonel Gray. I learned about new opportunities. I learned how to broaden my understanding of the world. Uh, there was great educational experiences and I really credit um, and uh, credit the teachers that I had uh, along the way with help really forming who I am today. Uh, and I'm going to take just a moment uh, to emphasize one teacher uh, that I had along the way and it might surprise a lot of people who that person is because that person uh, can sometimes be a little bit of a thorn in my side these days, uh, but it's someone uh, who at the time um, was uh, an absolute incredible teacher, someone who provoked thought, provoked discussion, uh, and someone who uh, I uh, think had a great influence on myself uh, getting into politics uh, and doing what I do today, and that's uh, Leo Broderick, for anybody who had Leo along the way. And just to put, I don't know if Leo's here or not, but just to put things into perspective in terms of Leo's age, I hate to give him a hard time, but when I was leaving my office uh, this morning, I mentioned uh, to my assistant uh, that I was going to recognize one of my teachers, and my assistant, I hate to give her age, let's say she's plus 50, not by much, um, and she said, uh, and she said uh, to uh, me, well, which teacher uh, do you remember the most? And I said, uh, Leo Broderick, and she goes, you know, that's the teacher I remember the most too. <laughs> so Leo was around for a while, but you know, Leo was, he taught me grade 12 uh, political studies uh, at the time, um, and he taught me to respect everyone's opinion. And a lot of us, uh, especially in my world and business, have uh, different opinions, the same as I'm sure the Teachers Federation, there's different members of your boards, and you're going to have great debates here, and the thing that he taught me was to respect everyone's opinion. Regardless if you disagree with someone, uh, you have to respect them for standing up uh, in what uh, they believe in. So uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Leo, for helping shape uh, who I am today, and I'm looking forward to further debates that we may have uh, in the future. Uh, you know, as a government, though, uh, we also believe that education is really a better future. Um, and we're extremely fortunate to live in what I believe is the greatest province of the greatest country in the world. And here we are, a province of 140,000 people, um, and we get to shape our own education system the same as Ontario does with 11 million people or Quebec with 7 million people. And because we're so small, I think it lends us the opportunity to be able to shape our education system even more so here than in other provinces because we are so small. And I think we have to use that uh, to our advantage. And we believe that by investing uh, in our people, uh, they are our greatest resource. We're not fortunate like perhaps Alberta or other provinces that are rich in minerals or oil or timber. Uh, but what we are rich in is a population that is extremely loyal to our province. And if we can make sure that the future generations of islanders have all the tools necessary uh, to help them grow in their lives, it's going to make our province a better place. And that was one of the reasons uh, why this year uh, we were able to introduce kindergarten into our school system. It was a giant step forward. Uh, it was something that I know previous governments have lo had looked at 
uh, in the past. It was always on the radar screen. The Teachers Federation uh, had it on, on their screen. Uh, the, uh, uh, les, les écoles en français, c'était quelque chose qui était en avancement de les uh, autres écoles. Uh, and it was something that we wanted to make sure uh, that we gave every Islander, every island child, uh, a similar start uh, in life. And that's why I want to thank you folks. Thank you folks, thank Carrie, uh, thank uh, the Teachers Federation for being so supportive uh, through these processes. Because we all know that when we ask someone, do they think things have to change? Uh, they always say absolutely, but then when you get to that change, there's always going to be a segment of the population uh, that's going to have difficulty with that. But uh, it was a uh, process uh, that was well executed, well researched. Um, and I'm very uh, happy to say that uh, I'm very pleased uh, with what I've seen uh, so far. But with the transition of kindergarten into the school system, it also created opportunities in early childhood. And I'm very pleased uh, that we were able to introduce our preschool excellence initiative uh, as well this year. And the implementation of this new system meant that funding for the early childhood sec sector had to increase by 63% from 5.35 million to $8.7 million. And that's really about getting our young kids ready for the kindergarten system and, and you folks when they enter uh, the school system. We've also invested heavily uh, in literacy and numeracy. Uh, we've seen the number of educators in our system grow, have we not, Sean? Um, there, are currently, <laughs> there are currently nearly 1,700 full-time equivalent teachers in the system, up from fewer than 1,500 when our government came to power a short three years ago. And all this has taken place even as enrollments in the province have fallen. There are now nearly 300. <laughs> There's also nearly 350 full-time equivalent educational assistants and youth service workers compared to a little over 280 in 2007, and of course the student-teacher ratio is declining in our province, which is a good thing. Interactive whiteboards have been added to all of our island high schools this year at a cost of $700,000, and I'm very fortunate uh, to be able to tell you today that there's going to be further investments in terms of uh, technology in our school systems, because I want to make sure that you folks have the tools necessary and the technologies necessary to help prepare the future generations of this province. And of course, there's been many new investments uh, in capital projects. Uh, anyone who has the opportunity to see that new Montague High School, I'm looking forward to all our schools uh, being up to date like that. It's uh, tremendous. Uh, we've been able to invest uh, in new buses, and all this has been really part of a plan uh, to make Prince Edward Island a leader when it comes to education. And why do we have to do that? Why is it so important to invest in education? Some people may not realize that these are investments that I believe will pay dividends for a long time to come. And some time ago, uh, the US President Barack Obama had this to say about education. He said, those places that out educate us will outcompete us. Those places that out educate us today will outcompete us tomorrow. This is what it's all about. It's about educating our children today so that we can be the strongest competitors on this planet tomorrow. And that's what it's about to me. It's about making sure that we're providing the necessary tools so that our future generations will be able to compete in a globalized world. We're entering a globalized world and we need to make sure that our children here in Prince Edward Island have the opportunity to compete anywhere in the world and that we can live and work right here in Prince Edward Island and compete with anywhere in the world. And you know, it's been, just for me to divert back a little bit, I view this, and I talked in, in a little bit of uh, uh, moving things around a little bit earlier, but just to put things in the natural progression, the plan that we've implemented, the investments in early childhood education, then the movement to kindergarten in the school system, more investments in the 1 to 12 program, and of course, we've been very fortunate to make a lot of investments 
in post-secondary education. And I'm happy to say that last year alone, nearly 900 islanders received help with the cost of their education through the George Coles bursary. And what the George Coles bursary is it's a $2,000 bursary for any island student wanting to attend UPEI, Holland College, or La Collège Acadie. And really what this has done is allowed our island students a better opportunity to attend post-secondary education. I want to do more. If you look at some of the European or Scandinavian countries around the world, post-secondary education is becoming more and more cheaper. And in fact, some nations are even moving to where it's publicly funded. We're not in that financial situation today. We may be somewhere down the future, but I want to make post-secondary education no longer that it has to be a privilege for people to attain post-secondary education. I believe it should be a right. You know, we're also making investments in infrastructure and post-secondary education. You can just see the changes out at UPEI, the changes at Holland College here. We're also making sure that it's more available all across our province, and I'm very happy to say that there will be a new Holland College campus that will open in western Prince Edward Island uh, in 2011. So I hope you see that our plan is really multifaceted. It's built on an education system that starts at birth and works its way all through a person's life. But ladies and gentlemen, teachers, it needs your passion. It needs your passion for teaching. And it needs the incredible, incredible commitment you bring to children on a daily basis. I know that each and every one of you believes it is possible to achieve great goals in our education system. And I want to assure you that I and our government also believe in that vision. I want you to be confident that government will support you in the pursuit of these goals. And I want you to know that government and myself, that we're fully aware of this undeniable fact, that even with the most modern facilities, the most up-to-date technology, and the very best curriculum in the world, that it is all nothing without teachers. We need teachers to help us make the difference in this province. We need teachers to be able to use those tools that we provide to prepare our next generation of leaders in this province. And I want you to know that I think you're doing a fantastic job, that our government's going to be there to support you. And as long as I have the privilege of being Premier of this province, I'm going to continue to work with the teachers of this province to help make sure that Prince Edward Islands will be a great place to live, work, and to learn. Thank you very much for your time today, and have a great conference.